try to innovate because innovation is is not just coding it's trying to figure out what is the problem and trying to figure out the steps to solve it so with your own skill set what can you contribute Caitlin, Olga from Museum, y'all, thank you so much for coming and ha hanging out with us today. Thank you so Thanks much. for having us. The audience are all entrepreneurs, right? So there's like thousands and thousands that tune in every day to get advice and hear what's going on in different industries. It's interesting with you two, a lot of them are tech founders, right? Mm. But a hell of a lot of them aren't tech founders and might have had a tech idea and gone through this really difficult journey of not being a tech techie, mm -hmm. but having an idea and wanting to launch a tech company. That's kind of the situation you guys are in. Mm -hmm. So you guys, obviously, it's, a, it's VR for education, right? Did you, in the beginning, did you ever think, we're not in tech, we can't do this? Or, or what was your thoughts initially? Uh, well, I think, uh, so it started around two and a half years ago when I was completing my master's mm -hmm. in arts and management. And I was like, well, virtual reality can really help museums. Mm. And then, obviously, I couldn't program virtual reality myself to start with. So. Yeah. I just started talking to every single person I knew, okay. clearly <laughs> identifying that I can't do it on my own. <laughs> yeah. And if there is a person who can help me, mm. that's how I founded my first internship with the virtual reality startup. Cool. Uh, so I basically traded in my time for someone to create an MVP for me. Never happened, but then I learned on the job. Uh. And after it gave me time to find the right person uh, who helped us to basically build the first product that is uh, our CTO, Alex. So you volunteered time basically mm -hmm. in, you know, and then we swap and they build the MVP. So I suppose that's probably a good piece of advice for people watching that mm -hmm. you can give up some of your time or you can actually speak to people and try and get help, mm -hmm. but they never built it in the end. But at least you did, you did learn about the industry instead of, because a lot of people out there, they, they try and just do it and maybe be a little bit naive yeah. that they might be able to pull it off. And so what was the next step then? So the MVP didn't get built, but you did learn a lot about the industry. Mm -hmm. So what was, what was next? Um, so after, so the MVP didn't, got, didn't get built, mm. I worked with the company for almost a year and somewhere midway I was building my small MVP that I started testing with kids in Paris to see and to get the feedback. Cool. Mm -hmm. And that's when I met Caitlin and everything yeah. changed in my life. <laughs> for the better or worse? <laughs> well, <laughs> <that's> sometimes <laughs> I question it. <laughs> Obviously for better. Yeah, and I think coming from my background, um, I was pursuing an engineering degree in the States. I switched into more English and design because mm. I'm much more people user centric. Um, and I saw Olga's MVP and I stopped her and saw the potential and power in it that could go so much further than just a VR game. Mm. There's so many layers we could add that could add education, arts, history. Um, and I think having that kind of outsider view allowed me and especially us to come in and kind of reshape the VR industry from our own perspective. Yeah, it, it's interesting because I go back to, to Dublin quite a bit and see friends and see family, maybe once, once every six weeks or so. But when my, my nephew comes over, it's, he says hi, gives a hug, and it's like on a tablet. Like for, and then my sister's trying to get the tablet off him and all this sort of stuff. But <laughs> it's, it's crazy the amount that he learns, right? Because obviously there's some like stupid fun games on it. But then there's other games that he's just so engrossed in Mm -hmm. that he's just learning so much about it and he can explain the game so well mm -hmm. to me it's in just a, like a chat what is that game what to do but he knows it so well mm -hmm. because they're so engrossed in it and, and is that kind of the same thing you want to take but take even more of an educational standpoint with it yeah i think with us we add layers uh beyond the immersivity of vr because you are you are absolutely there teleported yeah. back in time there's where there's elements of gamification and different learning methodologies that we've learned through um UCL Educate in different educational programs up in Finland mm. that can scaffold learning without kids realizing it. So to learn about Egypt, they go back in time to Egypt to yeah. explore it and see it in context. And that's when kids get engrossed and sucked into that VR um, life. Yeah. But saying that, it's very important, like for us, for example, it was very, very important to make sure that kids just don't stay in virtual reality all the time. Okay. So the entire framework that we are working within actually allows parents to track what the child is learning and not to have the conversations over the dinner table or carry out a couple Quite of cool. activities that we suggest. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, for example, with ancient Egypt, it's one of the most favorite levels for kids. They still don't know what sarcophagus means or mm -hmm. hieroglyphics, but then we provide them with a framework that they can write their own name in ancient Egyptian oh, and they cool. can make their little papyrus. And then this way we actually show parents that 
virtual reality is and like gamified virtual reality is being used as a tool to spark the interest and everything else we kind of provide the framework to work with. Yeah, it's super interesting because obviously we, we meet a lot of people that are mm -hmm. after launching a business or growing a business or exiting a business, but we meet a hell of a lot that want to start a business. You know, mm -hmm. like, I don't know if you guys have heard of like Escape the City and these yeah. programs mm -hmm. and things like that, but people always come to us and say, where can I find a technical co-founder? I don't know how many times a month it happens. So I want to find a technical co-founder, mm -hmm. otherwise it's going to be really, really expensive to, yeah. to try and get something done. But then trying to convince a technical co-founder that your idea is Mm -hmm. The best and convince someone else can be difficult. So did you have to go out and pay a tech team or? Oh, well, I think we were lucky here because actually, um, so I'm originally from Ukraine and um, just a couple of months before I met Caitlin, I called a friend in Ukraine with whom I studied and I was like, I heard you're doing something with computers. <laughs> and it was a very, very long shot, don't get yeah, me yeah. wrong. But I was very lucky because he was actually, uh, he was actually working with virtual reality companies and he was building virtual reality. Oh. So when I kind of shared with him the visions that we are trying to, be, to bring culture closer to kids and we are trying to open it up so kids just don't spend six hours on YouTube and they do something else. He got really passionate about it because he has uh, little siblings. Oh, right, okay. So he understood from that point yeah. of view yeah. exactly what it is. And he, he helped build it? Yeah, yeah, he helped to build it. He helped to start building it, just like a basic MVP. And after he kind of kept on helping me and iterating. And what really worked well for me and Caitlin and him is the fact that, well, we don't see the boundaries in this technical world. Like, you see, yeah, like, yeah. I come up with a vision, I tell you that I want this to do that and that to do that, and mm. it's like, this is impossible. And I'm like, well, you have a week to figure it out. <laughs> At I least can... you gave him enough time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, and like, again, like, obviously, from, like, from my background, now I know a little bit more about virtual reality, yeah. about how it works and what can be done to optimize stuff or mm. how to optimize the process. And again, what kind of gamification is possible, yeah. what kind of gamification is not, but we are always trying to push the boundaries. And I think it's very important to find the, not just the technical founder or the technical, like all your CTO, but, mm -hmm. but the person who sees something just beyond the tech. Yeah. yeah, it's an interesting one because we're always talking about in the circle or outside mm -hmm. the circle. Always comes up because you're in the circle in the industry and trying to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. Is that better or is it better coming from a complete outsider? Because as you say, if you had a really technical background and you knew how to do it, you, mm -hmm. you might you would limit your thinking. Would yeah. you say that? I don't think that can be done. But for you, anything can be done in Europe. You know, yeah. it just takes time. And just yeah. like tell me what you're lucky in, what kind of expertise do we need? Uh, so Alex is great in building virtual reality mm -hmm. and he is great with graphics. But then when I told him, well, now I need the app, he was like, I can't do the app. And I'm <laughs> like, well, tell me what needs to be done and mm -hmm. after we're going to figure it out together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've built UX UI for the app and after we build the fireframes and after, based on that, Alex kind of started taking his first steps. And now we have an app. It took him like four weeks. Mm -hmm. Oh really? That's yeah. a pretty quick turnaround. Yeah. Yeah. Like he had some experience, but it wasn't like his yeah, of course. his primary field of interest. So what is the big picture? Is it that every single school has you know a VR, an hour or two of VR mm -hmm. a day, or what? Or is it just a purely home thing that when kids get home they experience it? What what do you want? Or is it both? No, <laughs> Why I not? think I think for us we want to bring cultural education to every child in a way that's exciting and engaging for them. So we believe that it can be used at home so kids from Detroit to Durham mm. can experience this. Uh, but we're also launching a school kind of platform as well because oh, cool. VR is implemented in schools across the US and the UK and we see so much value and potential in that as well. So if the kids don't have access to a smartphone at home, they can experience it in school. Yeah, just before we, just before we run out of time, mm -hmm. for the entrepreneurs that are watching, right, mm -hmm. or the potential future entrepreneurs that want to start a business, aren't technical, and that is the one thing that's holding them back, because they know there's loads watching, that just <laughs> won't take that step, mm. because they're nervous of it, they don't know where to turn, they don't mm -hmm. have the money to do it, there's a million reasons not, not to try and do it in their heads. What would your piece of advice for them be? Do you first? Uh, yes, I think that, firstly, understand that maybe not, try to innovate, because innovation is, is not just coding, it's trying to figure out what is the problem and trying to figure out the steps to solve it. So with your own skill set, what can you contribute there? Can you design a game? Can you make something happen? Can you make important contact? Then 
you can actually help another person with a more technical background to realize the vision. So it's very, very important to find the right mindset who will be able to share your vision. And I think that what I've seen a lot is people trying to find the technical founder, mm -hmm. not knowing what, what they need. Mm -hmm. When I started working with Alex, I knew exactly what needed to be done from the technical oh, side okay. because I've spoken to so many people mm -hmm. and I already knew what are exact steps that needs to be done and what could be the potential problems. Mm -hmm. But when you just kind of try to, I don't know, just drop something on someone, yeah. it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. These people are probably not that invested into your idea. How can you, how can you incentivize them? Yeah, and I think from my perspective, like Olga says, coming from an angle that thinks differently, mm. um, use your strengths to your advantage. Our strengths are in the arts and communication and writing, and we are so passionate as founders. And find someone who aligns with that pas passion and that message and that mission, because there are so many people who will code you an app and it's okay, but you, you want to find someone who can grow with you, yeah. um, not a contractor. And I think the entrepreneurship community, especially here in London, across the world, people, if you reach out, people will help, whether it's a book advice, the YouTube, uh, community meetups. Um, so don't be afraid to share your idea, especially with the tech yeah. community. Yeah, because sometimes people are being super protective over like the single idea. Yeah, and what I NDA. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and like what I'm usually saying, it's like, okay, if you can tell me that in two minutes and I can reverse engineer it or built it and probably your idea is not that great to or be it's honest taken. Yeah. or it's taken one or the other no it's good and that is actually something that comes up a hell of a lot it's like sign this nda i'm mm -hmm. really nervous blah 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 but look thank you so much for your time thank really you. appreciate it and best luck to the project thank, thank you, you very much, much.